Father God, in like manner, we ask by your spirit, please teach us your word. Amen. Open our understanding. Amen. Speak your word, O Spirit of God, speak the word of life. Amen. Lord Jesus, when you were speaking to those two friends on Amaios Road, the Bible says their hearts were burning in them. I ask, Lord, that your word will comfort like fire and let your word burn every chaff out of our lives. Let your word come forth like hammer and let your word break every stony ground, every rocky ground in our hearts, in our lives. Let your word break through and let us have the richness and the blessing of your word. Let our lives be transformed from glory to glory. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So I welcome every one of us to this Surefire Life Conference platform. This is a platform the Almighty God has given us to share the pathway to eternal life and make it simple and clear and available to everyone. And so everyone that has come upon this platform, you have to key roles to play. Role number one is for you to learn and be part and parcel of this eternal life. Gain the eternal life for yourself. Role number two is for you to become the ambassadors of Jesus Christ to spread the word of eternal life. This is what God wants us to do at this point in time. As I've always said, the greatest need of man is eternal life. Whether you accept it, whether you believe it, whether you know it or you don't know it, but this is the truth. The greatest need of man is eternal life. So we have been dealing with the topic of eternal life. Um, and our topic today is, uh, you, you can say is eternal life part three because we did part one, introduction, part two, uh, where we focus on enduring till the end. And today, part three, we'll be looking at judgments and rewards. Judgments and rewards. Praise the name of the Lord. We are going to take our texts from the scripture, uh, two scriptures where we will take our text from. The first scripture is Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. And our second text is Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and, the, and death and hates, that is grave, delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged each one according to his works. Then death and hates, which is grave, again, I mentioned, were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Just note, notice there that there are two books, the book of life and the books, the books of record of man's work and the book of life. Let's take the second text. 
Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. Praise the name of the Lord. So, judgments and rewards as a subset of eternal life. Let me start by again making a very emphatic statement that eternal life is not something yet to come. Eternal life is the everlasting life God has given to us through his son, Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit of God, who is the spirit of life. Eternal life is not something yet to come. Eternal life is the everlasting life God has given to us. While we are here on earth, God has given that eternal life to us through Jesus Christ, his son, by his Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of life. And so the critical thing is what we do while we are here on earth. It's very important to understand this principle because many people still think when the time comes, I will enter into eternal life. Oh, that is true. But if you did not receive that eternal life, who is Jesus Christ himself, while you are here on earth, you will be disappointed at that time. So when we are talking about judgment and reward, let us, again, our objective is always to keep this simple. Uh, With respect to eternal life, we have to understand this principle of receiving eternal life while here on earth so that the the day we give up breath here on earth, we know that we already have received eternal life. When you come to that point, you remember I told us, then you don't start quarreling about uh, what happens after you give up your breath here. Because you know that eternal life you have received is guaranteed forever. Praise the Lord. So there are many schools of thoughts. Some say the dead has no experience whatsoever. Some say the dead has experience and all manner of things. Some people even say those who died go immediately to heaven. (laughs) We will come to that and we will see what the Bible teaches. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's why our topic for uh, next Sunday is the resurrection of the dead. The resurrection of the dead. So keep it date. Don't miss it. But let me not jump the gun. Let's come back to judgment and rewards. So if you understand that you receive eternal life while you are here, then you will understand the scriptures that we read in the context of um, what, uh, in the context of eternal life, what pertains to us here now and what pertains to life after now. So let's quickly think about it. Judgment, what does judgment mean? Uh, Judgment, for there to be judgment, there must be a case of violation, or wrongdoing. It could even be a case of difference in opinion, and therefore you want to have a judge deciding, settling upon that case. So we know that in the law court, when we talk about judgment, we're talking about of a law court or a judge giving a decision concerning a defendant or legal matter. That is, it could be legal opinion. But what we're talking about here is about the defendant. Of course, you know, in criminal system, 
you talk about the accused, you know, the accused person and uh, the legal people. I'm not a lawyer, but I, I hear the lawyers say some interesting things. They say that the accused is not yet guilty until he is proven in the law of competent jurisdiction to speak the grammar of the legal people. Yeah, that he is guilty. Uh, of course, even in the Bible, that is recorded. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, you remember when um, the Jews were gathering and talking about Jesus and all that, I think one of them said, do we condemn somebody until the person has been tried and proven guilty? Okay, so judgment, therefore, we are talking about God, in this case, deciding a case. And what is this case? And what is this accusation? The accusation is this, that God has set before mankind life, eternal life. But mankind refuses that eternal life and has chosen his ways. I'll put it this way. As the Bible says, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So the judgment of God is that God has set his standard, has set his ways. God who created man, and yet man has left that way of God and is doing his own thing. It is that simple. That's the case. And we have to understand this case. So in the same manner, let me speak to reward so that when we run through the scripture, we will just take things that will benefit you. So when we are then talking about reward, just think about it. It is people who do well. So reward is actually what God will give to his children. Reward is for the children of God. So make this separation. Reward is for the children of God. As you would see there, the book of life contains those who are in Christ. And they will pass from death to life. So those are the people that reward is about. So we will come to that. Think about your child. He does something good and you reward that child. Or a student in the school is not those that fail that are rewarded. It is those who have passed. Even though modern schools now, they have prize for the most improved uh, child that has failed because they say they want to motivate the child. Okay, most improved. As long as it is not the one that has failed, uh, you have my support. But if it is the one that has failed, let's learn to tell people who are not doing the right thing that they should do the right thing. So let's then delve into some key things now that we have set the definitions so we can understand. Judgment means that mankind stands accused of a violation and there are consequences for this violation, to put it legally. Individually, there is accusation. So you cannot accuse somebody of a violation if there is no standard for that person to be judged against. So God has a standard and his standard is contained in the word. Praise the name of the Lord. The standard is contained in his word. So the word of God reveals to us the whole standard of what God expects of mankind. Whether we live and abide by that standard or not. So you will see in uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, you remember there Jesus Christ quoted when he was defeating the devil. He said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Man lives, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So the standard is in the word, is by the word of God. 
And that's why as a believer, you have to make it a duty to study the word so you know what has been provided for you and what is the standard of God's judgment. The second important point there is that ignorance is not accepted as, an, as a tenable excuse. Ignorance is not accepted as a tenable excuse. So there is no excuse. That's why Jesus Christ said that the gospel will be preached to all corners of the earth before the end will come. So no one has, will have excuse. So ignorance is not a tenable excuse. Let us see 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. You will see that the Bible says that we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So everyone will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. It is Christ who will judge all. But before we get there, as I said, as we received eternal life, there is also eternal uh, damnation. So anyone who is not in Christ already receives eternal damnation. And anyone who is in Christ receives eternal life. So what are the judgments? There are four aspects of judgments that you need to be aware of. Judgment by the word of God. As I've mentioned, judgment by the word of God. Judgment by your words. Judgment by your works. And judgment by the spirit. These are the four aspects you have to pay attention to. I know some, this may not immediately sit with you, but please pay attention to this because we're talking about having your life here while you are here on earth, living the fullest. That's the objective of this kind of teaching so that you will have no fear, no worries. You, you know exactly what you do here while you are here. So judgment by the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. If you look at the book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, every idle word that we speak, it said, will be judged. Matthew chapter 12, verses 36 and 37. Every idle word that we speak will be judged. Praise the name of the Lord. And in, yeah. verse, and in verse 37, it goes for that to say that by thy words, thou shalt be justified. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. So your word, the words that we speak, stands to justify us or stands to condemn us. So the word, our word judges us. As a Christian, be careful what kind of words you speak. Be careful what kind of words you speak. Our words carry power. Our words stands as a witness against us. There are many believers who live uh, and just use words anyhow. Idle words. Every idle word will be judged. Again, you look at uh, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 14. It says, a man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. A man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. You also see this same scripture in Proverbs chapter uh, 18, verse 21. It says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. So this are judgments that we go through almost daily while we are here. And many people are insensitive to it. So judgment by the word of God and judgment by your words. We've covered that. Judgment by your works. You already see in the second Corinthians chapter five, verse 10, that we mentioned. It said, 
uh, we will all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in a body, whether good or bad. But I want us to look at Matthew chapter 25 from verse 31 to the end. I, I believe the end is about uh, verse 49 or so. It's a long read and time will not permit us to go through everything there. But let's just bring, because I'm going to come back to reward on this. So it's important we're familiar with this scripture. He said, when the Son of Man comes in, the, in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom, prepared for you from the foundation of the world. 35, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. 37, then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothed you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and came to you? And the king will answer and say to them, as surely I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it for me. You did it for me. Now, let's get those key words out. Many believers are neglecting what the real works of righteousness are. You see here, these were called the righteous. He said the king will answer the righteous. Hallelujah. So if we start from verse 35, is number one. He said, I was what? Hungry and you gave me food. Feeding the hungry. Number two, I was thirsty and you gave me drink. That still sits with providing for the needy, isn't it? Summarize it, provide for the needy. I was a stranger and you took me in as three. Number four, I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. And in addition to these visits, now Jesus has commanded us to heal that sick. If you say you are a Christian, I want to challenge you here. When did you last pray for the sick? We are to pray for the sick. It is not your power. It is the power of Jesus. Jesus is looking for sick people to heal every day. But he wants you and I to be the one doing that work. So brethren, understand the works so that when we come back to reward, you will understand when Jesus is talking about reward. Reward is for the righteous. The judgment is for the wicked. Judgment is to determine what punishment the wicked will receive. Because anyone who denies Jesus Christ is already condemned. And there is one judgment, as I told us early. Because at times we get things a lot muddled up and things become confusing. There is only one judgment for the wicked. The accusation that stands against mankind is that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. But that the world have rejected life and they choose darkness. And so that's the judgment and the condemnation, therefore. I stopped at uh, number five, right? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? So I stopped at uh, sick. Yeah, so that's number five. And in prison, prison, visiting the one that is in prison. So you could see here what I call the works of mercy. Jesus said that those who show mercy will receive mercy. Blessed are the merciful. This is Matthew chapter five, the beatitude that we, are, we always talk about. For they shall obtain mercy. Praise the name of the Lord. So this is what I call the works of mercy. 
the works of mercy. So judgment by works. The final one is judgment by the Spirit. Judgment by the Spirit. First John chapter 4, verse 1. First John chapter 4, verse 1. It's important we read this. He says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Judgment by the spirit. So these are the aspects that we have to pay attention to. So what spirit are you made of? What spirit are you operating with? Is it the spirit of God? Is it the spirit of Christ? Romans chapter 8 verse 9. Romans chapter 8 verse 9. Makes it abundantly clear. He said anyone that does not have the spirit of Christ. That is the Holy Spirit of God is none of his. So when we talk about when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ will hear and they will come out from the grave, it is those who have the spirit of God who are here. So test the spirit, whether it is of God. That's the aspects of judgment. So Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That we know. But let's quickly get into reward and then summarize. Rewards, as I've told us, that rewards is the reward for the children of God. So those who are rewarded are those who are in Christ. And what are the areas that we are rewarded? I've bunched them into four areas. Number one is love for Jesus. Number one is love for Jesus. We are rewarded for our love for Jesus. Number two, we are rewarded for our work of mercy, which we have just read. In that same scripture, you would see that the opposite was said of those who didn't do what we just read. He said in verse 41, then he will also say to those on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. And continued. Those six works of mercy that we listed. He said, those who didn't do it will be damned. So we have talked about reward for love of Jesus. Love for Jesus. Of course, if you love Jesus, you love God. Reward for work of mercy to the needy. Reward for winning souls. And then reward for abiding and enduring. Let's look at a few scriptures and then we'll close it here. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19. There the Bible talks about the crown. Okay, let's read it. It says, What for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you? in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming, at his coming. Praise the name of the Lord. So you see there, it says, it is, is it not even you? That's the souls, the people we have impacted, the people we have strengthened and built up for Christ. The souls is important. And you, there are many crowns that people talk about. But brothers and sisters, those crowns all roll into these four aspects. So let's look at James chapter 1 verse 12. Because of time, I'll jump a number of them. So you hear a crown of rejoicing there. James chapter 1 verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. To those who love him. You can see 
Because of our love for Jesus Christ, we are able to endure temptation. We are able to endure whatever it may be. As we shared last uh, week when we were talking about enduring till the end, we said you have to come to that point where you say, I rather die than deny Jesus. No matter what, I love Jesus and I will abide with him. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Jesus. Let's also see uh, 1 Peter chapter 5. Verse 4, 1 Peter 5, for crown of glory, for being example to the flock of Christ, is the same thing, really. We've covered love of Jesus, you can see there. We've covered work of mercy. We've covered winning souls. Let's just look at abiding and enduring, abiding and enduring. John chapter 15, we'll just look at verse, it's from verse 1 to 9, but we'll look at verses 5 and 6, John chapter 15. Verses 5 and 6, very quickly. You remember John chapter 15 started by saying, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. So if we jump to verses 5 and 6, he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. Brethren, you can see that same fire here. This is a dangerous one. And that's why I want to spend a little time on this reward for abiding and enduring. Because this one is about believers. Who may turn away? You can see, it says you are the branch. A branch can only, it can only be somebody who has already come into the vine. He said, I am the vine. Jesus is the vine. And you are the branch. We are the branches. We make up his branch, the branches. So the branch is expected to abide. There will be reward only for those who abide till the end. That's why I'm not spending time talking about crowns because those crowns are embedded on you. Loving Jesus, walk, doing the work of mercy, winning souls, and more critically, abiding and enduring in Christ Jesus till the end. Otherwise, even those who have become a branch who do not abide, you see, he says, such a branch is cast out as a branch. Because without abiding in Christ, you cannot do anything. We cannot do anything. So, as we also learn, when those trials, when those temptations come, such a person is unable to stand. You remember, the only condition for a branch, one who has come into Christ, to actually slip or fall off is by that person denying Christ. Such a person would slip off and be cast off. Finally, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 15, particularly, speaks a lot. And I want us to read that by yourself. Go there and read. There, Paul taught the believers of the foundation that has been laid, the foundation that is Jesus Christ. And he said, as you endure upon that, in that foundation, you build upon it. And every work that is built, every man's work shall be tried. So when you understand this reward system of God, as I have shared with us here, reward for loving Jesus, you love him and love him and know that I love Jesus. I'd rather die than deny him. Because you love him, you show love to the needy. You show love. To the brethren, it's, it's good to love the brethren and love the needy. Jesus commands us to do that. You love God, you win souls for Christ. Witnessing, telling them about eternal life. The way that God has sent already to mankind. And then you abide because you love him. You abide in him. You abide with him. You fellowship continually. You stand for him. Then the reward is yours. Let's close by reading Revelation chapter 21, 
uh, verse 1 to 8. But on the way to that, you also see Revelation 3.21. Revelation 3.21. It says, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. You can see that. But let's close with Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 8. Hallelujah. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, I John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. For, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. Eight, the last. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Let me close with these emphatic statements as we have read. There are two books spoken about in the scripture. One that is a single book called the Book of Life, where all those who have come to Jesus Christ have their names written. And as they continue focusing on these four aspects of rewards that I've talked about, loving Jesus, loving God, because of that, carrying on the work of mercy, to the needy, because you love God. You do that service. To the needy. Winning souls, because you love Jesus and you're doing his will. Abiding, standing, enduring in him till the end. There are names in the book of life. And as we read in Revelation chapter 20, in verse 15, it says, And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Whether you believe it or not, as I said, next week we will talk about the resurrection. So that's when we will deal with this a bit more in detail. But now it's about you and I being equipped with understanding to face and focus the life that is important while we are here on earth. What are you doing to receive the reward? Summary is the greatest of all rewards. Is this final reward that we will be in the presence of the Lamb of God? As recorded there in Revelation chapter 21 that we have read. He who overcomes. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. So I encourage you to read this Revelation chapter 21 again from verse 1 to 8 and see for yourself. We're talking about eternal life. We're talking about the reward. The greatest reward is that reward that when Jesus will come, we will be with him. Let's close here and let's bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, Thank you for your word. Thank you for teaching us, making clear to us the judgment and the rewards. Lord, thank you because through Jesus Christ, we have already passed from judgment and you've written our names in the book of life and your reward is our portion. And so Lord, we ask for the grace to endure, to abide, 
We ask, Lord, for the spirit grace to serve you till the end. To walk in your love. To walk in the power of your spirit, the Holy Ghost. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen.